What you just saw was one of the many, many, many scenes that you can create using the rain generator that we're going to create in this video. We will make it that we have control over like the direction of the rain, how much rain and the scaling of the rain. It's going to be a very flexible and easy system that will make every scene look a thousand times better. But let's jump right into it. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to press shift A and we're going to insert two empties. These two empties are going to be the controller points for our rain. So this empty is going to be where the rain will fall off from and the rain will fall towards this empty. So with these two empties we can control like the direction of the rain. From here let's go into the geometry nodes and let's click on the cube and add in a new geometry node. We don't need the cube so we can remove the group input. We're going to start off with a grid. So add in a grid. On this grid we're going to distribute a lot of points with the distribute points on faces node. We can set the density on 100 for example so that we have a lot of points. On these points we want to have curved lines. So first we import an instance on points node. Put that over here and then as the instance we want to have a curve line. Set that over here, connect it with the instance and then we're getting a lot of curve lines. We want to say okay the top of the curve lines should be at the location of the first empty. And we can do that with a set position node. But you will see that if you do in the set position the offset, if you change that, then the whole curve is changing and not just like the top or the bottom. But we want to have control over either one of them. So let's add in an endpoint selection node so that we can have control over either the top part or the bottom part. Connect this selection to the selection of the set position and then set the end size on zero. Now if you change the offset you will see nothing will happen. That's because we have to realize the instances that we created over here so that we can actually do something with the individual curves. So let's do a realize instances node and connect that over here and then you will see you can move these around. We want that these points are at the same position as the location of this upper empty. And now that I'm talking about it, let's actually rename these empties. So this empty, I will call that upper empty and this empty I will call that lower empty. Now you can go back into the geometry nodes and you can take the upper empty and drag that inside of the geometry nodes so that you can use the location of this empty as the offset of the set position and then you will see these points are connected to that empty and you can determine the location of it by moving the empty. Go back into the geometry nodes and then we're going to make it that these points are going to connect with this empty. And we're going to do that by first making a little bit more space with the group output. And then we're going to select the endpoint selection, the set position and the object info. Press shift D to duplicate them and then connect the set position to the set position and the set position to the group output. Switch the start size and the end size. So the start size on zero, end size on one. And we also have to do the object info should be the lower empty. And then you will see, you will be able to freely decide what the direction is going to be of our rain. Next step, what we're going to do is that I want that when I take this upper empty and I scale it, that also the distribution of the curves is also going to be scaling along. And to do this, it's actually pretty simple. Go to the beginning of your geometry nodes. And when we want to say that the size of the grid, the X and Y, is the same as the size of the empty. So let's drag the upper empty to here. And then we have a scaling as well. We want to separate the X, Y, Z of the scaling. So add in a separate X, Y, Z node and put the scaling into the vector. If you now put the X into the X and the Y into the Y, you will see you can scale it with it. Let's go back to the end of our geometry nodes and what we want to do now is we want to generate a lot of points. And we're going to do that with the node points. Put that over here and the points look like this. It's literally points and if you set the count up then you're getting a lot of points like at the exact same location. For now I will set the count on, on one, that's fine. And we want to make these points slide from here to the end of each curve. And we can do that with a sample curve node. Put that over here. 
This sample curve gives you, for example, the position of each curve, the tangent and the normal of the curve. And we can use that to offset these points. So if you do a set position node for the points, so you put the points over here and we connect that over here, then we can connect the position information of each curve with the position of the set position. And then you will see our point goes over there. And if I change the factor in the sample curve, you will see it goes to the end of the curve. So if the factor is zero, it's at the beginning. If the factor is one, it goes to the end. If you add in a math node and you set this from add to fraction and then connect this to the factor, then you can make it that every time it gets past a full value, it starts over. And then you're already kind of simulating rain, as you see. Let's make this fraction uh, go automatically. So we want to make the fraction, the value of the fraction dependent on the scene time. So on the timeline, do this by adding in a scene time node and connect seconds with the value. And now if you press play, it goes like this automatically. Okay, but now we only have one point. We want to have a lot of points that go on every curve. So let's make at first the count in the points like a thousand, something like that. Then you see they all stay at the same position. We want to give each point a random position. So let's do that by adding in another math node. And we want to add to each point a random value. Random value. Add that to here. And now you see it gets like this. Then you see they all get distributed at a random point on this curve. But it's just doing it on one curve. And we want it to do on every curve. So in the sample curve node, turn on all curves. And then you get it like this. And now if you press play, you're getting a rain effect. But it goes way too fast, of course. Let's add in a node so that we can control the speed of this. And let's do that by adding in another math node between the add and the fraction. And we set this on divide. And then if you set this on 0.5, it goes even faster. But if you set it on 4, it already goes slower. You see, it starts to be a bit... Uh, weird to fix this you want that the max value of the random value is always the same as the value of the divide so we add in a, a value node we set this on four for example if you set the value on the max and also on the divide then it's perfect now if you set this on a very high value you see they go slower if you set it on 10,000, it goes very slow like this just for the purpose to, to explain to you, I will keep it on this slow value. Later, you can speed it up to make it actually look like rain, of course. Now we want to replace each point with an actual droplet. So to get that droplet, I'm just going to simply 3D model it. I'm not going to do some fancy geometry node stuff. Save some time, just model it by pressing Shift A and insert a UV sphere and create something like this. If you turn on proportional editing, you can move this part up. And then if you press A to select everything, you can press S and then Shift Z to make it a bit thinner. And let's also rename this into like uh, water, something like that. And then let's go back into our geometry nodes. And to replace each point with a droplet, we want to press Shift A and search for instance on points nodes. And then let's drag in our water and put the geometry as the instance. And we have it like this, set the scaling a little bit lower so that we can actually make it like droplets. But you will immediately see that when you play, yeah, the droplets are always pointing downwards. And we don't want that. We want them to point towards the direction that they are going. So to do this, we actually have that information. That information is in the sample curve. We have the tangent information. So with the tangent, we want to control the rotation of these instances. And you can do that by adding in an align Euler to vector node, connect the tangent with the vector and the rotation with the rotation of the instances on points. And then you get this to fix this, to make it go into the right direction, set this on Z. I will see they are all going backwards. Very simple way to fix this. Just in edit mode, rotate this droplet 180 degrees by pressing R and 180. And then you will see they all go into the right direction and you've basically generated rain. From here you can make the value that determines the speed of the droplets to make that a little bit of a lower value so that it goes faster, like this for example. And still we can play around with the position of these empties or the scaling of it. So if you change the scaling of it, then you're getting like a, a bigger area of 
rain and if you move it you're getting like a different angle one final thing let's take a look at the material of the of the water so let's uh, split our screen in half and change this to the shader editor click on new to add in a new material also go into material preview by the way so that you can see the materials then you can simply remove the principal bsdf and change it with a glass bsdf connect that and also press right click and do shade smooth in object mode to make this actually look smooth in the glass bsdf you can set the ior value on 1.33333 that's the ior value for water so that you get just that right amount of realism to make it look like water and then you see we're getting rain Thank you so much for watching my video again. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions. And subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And with that being said, I see you in the next one.